Hey and welcome back and in this lesson we are going to create our first drum loop using the redrum drum computer. So on the left hand side as you can see I created a new blank project and on the left hand side you've got your browser and you're going to drag the redrum drum computer into the rack just like so. Now I want to add a nice patch to this drum computer so the one we're going to use is house kit number three. Now you can obviously follow along with any other patches. You don't really have to use this one. You can do whatever you want to, but I'm gonna use this house kit uh, number three. So just drag that into your drum computer and that's gonna load all those samples from that patch. So an easy way to listen to these samples is right at the top, you can click on some of these play buttons and then you can listen to those individual samples. So let's have a listen. Okay, some very basic uh, house type of samples, but that will work nice for this lesson. Now, the redrum computer and some of the other instruments, there are multiple ways to create a loop and also multiple ways of um, having them in your sequence. Now, I'm going to quickly show you the way that I used to do this, and then I'm going to show you the new way that I'm doing it now. So as you can see here, you've got these pattern numbers, A1, 2, 8, and then you've got A, B, C, D. Now, I used to kind of program my drum loops using these little buttons here on the drum computer, and then you can specify in a sequence if you want to loop, let's say, A1 or A2 or A3. So you can kind of create different loops inside this one instrument. Let me show you what I mean. So let's start by laying down our drum kick. So this first sample, sample number one, you can hear if I click on this play button, that is our kick drum. So with this one selected, you can see you can click on these select buttons to select which sample you want to uh, play and make sure the first one is selected and also make sure that this is on A1. That's the pattern that we are currently programming. So if I put a, if I light this one, and if I click on this one, this one, and this one, and if we click on a run here to run our loop, let's see how that sounds. So you can see that's a very basic four to the floor uh, kick drum. All right, and uh, then what we can do is we can look for a hi-hat. So let's listen to one of these. So maybe this one, number seven. So I'm gonna select number seven, and then you can see it's gonna show you a blank pattern because we, if you click back to number one, it's gonna show you those kick drum samples that we loaded in there. And if we go back to this number seven, it's gonna show you a blank pattern. And now you can draw in where you wanna place your hi-hats. So I'm gonna place them on three, seven, 11, and also 15. So let's have a look. So now I'm gonna click on this run button again. So as you can hear, it's playing the kick drum and it's playing the hi-hat, okay? And uh, let me just add some other sample as well. Maybe this closed hi-hat. I'm just gonna kind of put that on every second um, one year. So let's have a listen to that. Okay, that's kind of interesting. And then let's add a clap sound. So maybe kind of this one, number six. So I'm gonna add that on the fifth and also on 13. Okay, let's click on run. Okay, so now I can see we've programmed a very basic loop using A1 pattern. Now remember, this is the way that I'm not really doing it anymore, but I'm gonna show you guys anyway how to do it using these patterns. So in your sequencer, you'll see there is this little button here that says create pattern lanes. Now if you're using these patterns here, you need to use this pattern lane. So I'm gonna click this, and you're gonna see it's gonna add this little extra line here next to this, uh, next to this instrument. 
So now I can create my bar. So I'm just going to put my left and right. So it's just across one bar here. Make sure this is on one bar. And then I'm going to double click here. Now here you can see it's going to create this um, little box next to the pattern select. And if you look closely, it says A1. So yeah, I can click and I can drop down and I can select which pattern I want to play. So currently we've programmed A1 right there. So I'm going to set this to A1 as well. So you can see, see there it says A1. So now if I play my sequence here, you're going to hear pattern A1. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Now let's say you want to play a2, which is completely blank, because we haven't programmed anything in A2. If I click on the run here, you won't hear anything because we haven't programmed any notes there. So now I can go and you can double click here and I can change this one to A2. So now if I play this back, you're gonna hear it's gonna play A1. And if you keep your eye on the drum machine, you can see how it's gonna change here. So there you can see it's changing to A2 and then it's silence here. So you can use this method if you want to program your notes this way, but I'm going to show you the way that I'm doing it right now. All right, so I'm going to go back to my A1 pattern and I'm just going to clear this out. So you can just click on these ones that you actually programmed and I'm going to clear the kick drums and I think we also programmed some other ones in here. This one, I'm just going to delete all those notes and all these ones. So now if I play A1, it's all back to normal, all nothing programmed in that loop. Okay, so what I'm going to do here, I'm going to delete this pattern select. So I'm just going to click on this little X, and now we don't have that pattern select anymore. Okay, so I'm just going to put my R here, so we're only seeing one bar there. And I'm going to double click here to create our section that we're going to edit. And now the same as we normally use our other instruments to create MIDI notes, I'm going to double click on this area and then this is going to take me into this edit mode. Okay, so I'm just going to zoom in here a little bit more and um, let's just put our left and right there. I'm just going to change the resolution here to bar and you're going to see it's going to play through and we haven't programmed anything. Now, the same as your normal piano roll, instead of the piano roll, we've got our samples here. So if I click them, I can listen to them. So there you can see there's the same samples as it's having here at the top of the Redrum computer. So I'm gonna change the resolution to eight and, uh, or let's make it, yeah, it's actually fine. So I'm gonna take the pencil tool and I'm going to draw in my kick drums. Now the kick drum is this first one. So it's actually starting from the bottom up. So the bottom one is sample number one. The second one from the bottom is number two and so on. So I'm going to cl um, just click here to create a drum, a kick drum there, there, there and there. So let's have a play. All right, so you can see we've got our kick drum in there. Um, and now we want to do the open hi-hat. Okay, so maybe this one, and I'm going to place this in between my kick drums. Like that. Okay, let's play this. Okay, I'm going to stop that. And let's add our claps. Maybe this one. So I'm going to place the clap on this downbeat there and then that downbeat there. That's, let's play through that. Okay, that's pretty cool. And now I want to change the resolution to about 16, 16th notes, and you'll see it's going to give us this smaller note resolution. And I want to add some close hi-hats in there. So maybe this one, and I'm going to lay it down on every single note. So I can copy and paste. So I'm going to select all those ones, and I'm going to hold in Alt on my keyboard and just drag them right there. 
Okay, let's play through that. Okay, that's sounding pretty cool. So now I wanna show you a few things that you can actually change on the drum computer to influence your sound in the sequencer. So you'll see all of these sample, um, all of these samples have different settings right here that you can actually adjust. So I'm gonna start, just click on the, the, the kick drum and you can see it's got a length right there. It's got a level tone and some other buttons as well and sometimes they're a little bit different you can see there's a start here but there's no start on this one so it all depends on which sample slot you are using so the level that is the volume of that one sample so if i play through this i'm gonna play through this um, loop and then i'm gonna adjust the level and as you can hear that's just affecting the kick drum the same with the length, that's the length of the sample that it's playing. I'm gonna play the loop and then adjust the length. And same with the pitch. So as you can see, it's only affecting that one sample. Same with the tone. So this is quite nice. It gives you quite a nice control over each of the samples that you are using. And you can do this with all of these and adjust them accordingly. You can also adjust the velocity here in the sequencer for that specific, um, that specific note. Same as we did with the MIDI notes. And uh, yeah, so if I go out of edit mode now, you've got your little section that we created. And now I can just copy and paste this by using Alt or copy and paste. So I'm gonna hold in Alt and I'm gonna drag it there. And let's do four copies like that. And then I'm gonna place my right just on the next to the, or just right of the fourth bar. And now if we play this, you'll hear that loop over and over. So what you can do now is if you want to add some variation, I want to add some variation to this last one. I'm going to double click on that one and let's just scroll over there and maybe let's add a little bit of a variation to the kick drum. So I'm going to maybe move this kick drum there and maybe let's make it, uh, yeah, maybe just something like that. Let's have a listen. Just like another uh, little double beat there. So I'm gonna change the color of this one. So I'm gonna right click, clip color, and let's make that green. So let's have a listen. Okay, so you can hear the little variation there at the end on that one bar. So that's basically how I add my drum loops using the redrum computer. You can use this way where you're using these little buttons and then program the pattern, but I just find it a little bit confusing when you have to kind of remember which one is which, and I just find it easier to draw in my drum loops like this, and then you can create the variations exactly how you want it to be, and you can color code them accordingly. So play around with this and save your track because we are going to continue using this track in some of the future lessons. So save this track and I will see you in the next lesson.